Hail to you all, be you noblemen or peasants, whatever. It's myself, Jonathan, also known as the PC Genie, and today I'm going to be talking about a subject I've decided to talk about, which is, you know, how well trained in close combat and the art of fighting with weapons and unarmed as well, that peasants would have, and people like commoners. Uh, the reason I've done this is because I just saw a video by a YouTuber who I quite, I quite like, don't get me wrong, called The Metatron. He is an Italian, uh, starting to look at HEMA, certainly quite knowledgeable in various areas, especially linguistics and those sorts of areas. But uh, one of the things he mentioned recently, uh, he, was he was doing sort of sparring with somebody else, and he, meant, he was sort of excusing me, them saying, you know, well, the person he was sparring against wasn't, you know, skilled, and potentially that certain commoners and peasants wouldn't know how to fight. And I do agree with him to a degree, but the degree he took it to was even saying that, you know, people actually fighting in wars in so many, it sounded like in so many cases, would not be trained in fighting, or at least anything that looks similar to historical European martial arts. I object to that. I think that's wrong. And I shall go through these points now, and go through at least, well, a few different reasons, four reasons, that is, why I think that's not the case. Firstly, it's very cost-effective to train peasants. If you have someone like a noble knight who is very well trained in combat, has spent all of these years learning to become a proper warrior, then it's not much you can do to change their weapons, you know, sort of training. I mean, granted, you can maybe show them how to have the situation awareness when there are multiple opponents all around, uh, information like uh, maybe tactics to learn to do things like surround the opponents or be aware of how to help your buddies to your sides and whatnot. Those sorts of things to adapt and fighting in formation, to adapt to being in a battlefield. But let's be honest, if you've already got a knight who knows how to use things like sword, polax, spears and all the rest really effectively, it's not. It's a lot of diminishing returns, isn't it? If you're going to try to train them further in weapon combat, for quite a bit of expense incurred, you're not going to really see much of a difference, really. Unless, like I say, you go into the other areas they might not be used to, like fighting multiple opponents, fighting in formation, and those sorts of key differences. Whereas, on the other hand, with peasants and people who maybe, you know, have only been in things like brawls and fights and all the rest, and, you know, people who've maybe never picked up a weapon in their life, sort of, is this the sharp end? type of thing, you know, you're going to get a situation where, just for a little bit of expenditure, they can learn a heck of a lot. So hence, it would be quite effective for people like noblemen or, you know, whoever's training an army to levy into war or, you know, just to make a militia to defend a local village, town or city, it's going to be cost effective to have them taught in the art of arms whenever they're preparing for any expected fight. My second point is self-defense in close combat. You know, peasants would want to learn. So of course, although understandably a bit similar to modern times, it's not like, you know, you're in the Elder Scrolls, you're there, la 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 la, I'm just gonna take a stroll, five paces later, oh another fight, I've got a dragon on my hands, what? And then, five paces later, brigands, oh no! Obviously, in real life, someone like a peasant or, you know, someone who's just working on a farm, not, you know, living a peaceful life, could potentially go their entire life without ever having to fight or defend themselves once. But that again is similar to the modern period. And yet, there are situations where people do still have to defend themselves. And on top of that, people in the modern age, just like probably even more so in the medieval period, I predict, people want to learn how to defend themselves because it's the equivalent of keeping a first aid kit in your car. You don't want to wait until after you've broken your leg to think, hmm, maybe I should get something, you know, to you know, make a splint out of or whatever. You want to be prepared before an emergency happens. So again, with that type of, you know, thinking, quite often, probably peasants and commoners would still have tried to learn how to fight, 
even if they weren't going to war or you know needed to be trained so for militia duties or whatever, they'd still think, well, what if someone tries to rob me, you know? Or what if someone gets really angry and wants to kill me in a bar fight or something? That they want to know, in a, in obviously not all cases, but at least some, <coughs> excuse me, they'd still want to know how to protect themselves if an emergency did happen. So hence, I think that it would actually be a, a situation where peasants could learn how to defend themselves, and they would be willing to learn. Now in terms of how they could learn, I've seen in certain manuscripts information that would be accessible to peasants. So for example, I have seen in Fiore's manuscripts, uh, you've got uh, things like your dagger, so you've got uh, someone tries to do a basic like a horror movie type stab, DIE! Or someone does something like, well, like a, a chav stab overhand, DIE! Same kind of thing. You've got information in those manuscripts, of course designed for rich people who can read and write, They've got information on how to catch and disarm those weapons in repost, or you know how to basically counter someone who's trying to kill you, or kill them yourselves if you're a nastier sort. And yet, although this sort of information is, you know, in manus, I'm seeing it in manuscripts that are designed for nobles and non-commoners because such people can't afford books, can't afford to read and write, wouldn't have any such access at all. I still think the techniques are easy enough and basic enough that they could be quite easily taught, and thus would be much more common knowledge. Because one example I can give is where my club that I went to previously uh, actually, in one case, allowed me to sort of teach some of the new guys uh, basic dagger techniques. So it was just a basic sort of hour-long uh, sort of flow drill, which was oh yeah, we'll use a dagger. Uh, that was just that sort of horror movie type stab. Try to stab the person, counters by catch, twist, disarm, and then second stab is one of these, which is a bit like, oh, this failed your arms in a way, alright then, ja! So you do that. A second attack, swan parries, and then counters takes the dagger, and then they go for the third attack, which is that same chaff style stab, and then they catch and disarm, and we're back to number one again. And it just flow back and forth. So bearing this in mind, I'm not exactly a champion. I've only been doing historical European martial arts in small stints for a couple of hours at a time, once a week, and also many times when I couldn't come over on the training nights. So, I, you know, this was over a few years, but I probably didn't get that much experience in that time. But yet I was still at the degree of skill where I could actually teach these people how to do those basic techniques, which would realistically come up in something like a self-defense scenario. So it's easy to learn and quick to learn, like I was mentioning earlier about the steep learning curve. It's cheap because, I mean, you'd have someone like me who, you know, isn't going to be a master who's going to go pay up lots of shinies. You know, quite a lot of people will know this stuff and thus it'd be quite common knowledge and quite cheap. And on top of that, you know, these sorts of techniques could come up you know, it would be quite useful in a real fight. Like again, someone pick, just goes, I hate you, pick up a dagger, try to stab them. They'll want to know how to protect themselves against that. And the, although they might not be interested or be able to afford the greater sorts of, you know, contra counter remedy masters type of thing, the, the counter to the counter to the counter to the original attack type of thing, they might still want to know the sorts of ways people try to kill you and the sorts of ways you should respond in a basic sense. So that's my second point. So it clearly is worthwhile in a peasant's eyes to try and learn how to defend themselves, even if they think they probably won't need to defend themselves for their life. Point three, transferability. So, granted this is where it gets more to con maybe conjecture on my end, but I think it's worth noting that some techniques, I think, are transferable. So, you know, you might say, oh, well, Jonathan, you're saying that peasants, you know, uh, will be learning to fight and they'll want to learn self-defense and things like that. But, I mean, Metatron said that you're all reposting to that it wasn't really, you know, it, what you'd be seeing is probably not similar to HEMA, historical European martial arts. So. What's to say it was? Maybe it was just a completely different style. 
Oh, objection! I have. Well, I'd say it's probably more conjecture, but uh, my idea is that it probably could still transfer from some techniques to others, some weapon styles to others. What do I mean? Uh, one example I can give you is, let's say, using sword and buckler. So obviously this is a professional style. Granted, some civilians might well have access to these types of weapons, which again, bolsters the fact that they probably would have wanted to learn to train those, because some could use things like arming swords and bucklers. Apart from that, you've got the techniques that you learn that you can use with different weapons and styles. So for example, you've got things like sword and buckler. Now granted I'm not an expert in sword and buckler, even though I want to be one day, I still think that you could transfer it to more common objects. So let's say I've been learning sword and buckler, but hey, I can't afford a real sword. I can't afford a real buckler. No, I'll have to pick up gardening tools and common objects. Uh, this is a saucepan lid, but you can imagine a pot lid, barrel lid. You can imagine all kinds of you know other improvised items you can use. And it doesn't have to be in this particular combination. All kinds of combinations that people might use. You know, your pitch, the most common you'd see on television and in computer games is the, that pitchfork is now my peasant's spear type of thing. But here's just another example. So you'd have, you know, you can have the different techniques, and although you'll definitely be at quite the disadvantage using peasant's items, you know, that aren't real weapons and armor and gear, you can still use them with those techniques and it can help you a lot in a fight. Whether you are going to war, whether you are going to be a part of a militia defending somewhere or attacking somewhere, or whether you're just going to be using it for self-defense. So again, with those techniques being transferable between different weapons and between different styles, it helps to know those techniques even if you don't have access to all the highest quality equipment to do so. Now for my last point, the manuscripts themselves. Now consider this, obviously you'd have things like double-handed swords and poleaxe styles and things like that, which obviously they'd be passed down by other one noble to the other, and to be honest most of the treatises do contain that sort of content, but it's an interesting sort of, granted it, you see them in manuscripts so they are designed for people of noble birth who can read Right. You see manuscripts where, obviously in some cases they've got your obvious weapon stuff, so you have two-handed sword, spear, poleaxe, sword and buckler, those types of things. But then there'll be others going, oh yeah, you've got all those weapon styles. <laughs> yeah, that's great, but <clears throat> see this master here? He's got a treatise which includes that plus how to defend yourself with a sickle. <laughs> one up to you there. But oh wait, oh wait, there's more! How to defend yourself? The log. Actual example. And oh yes, how to defend yourself with those weird flail things that you use for threshing grain that nobody in their right mind should probably use as a weapon. <laughs> all kinds of other things. Now of course, with these types of styles, I, I don't you know, you wouldn't really use them in combat unless you're in a really desperate situation. Maybe you're, you know, in your normal everyday clothes, you haven't brought weapons and stuff for you, and suddenly, ah, brigands are trying to ambush me. And these peasants don't seem very helpful. Uh, go a hoe and gah, murder and stuff. But uh, I think really it was just more for sort of showing off the purposes. But it is interesting, because I th when I look at these, I think, where did they get the information from originally? <clears throat> now, of course, with, like I say, with the more posh sort of styles, with poleaxe, double-handed swords, and those, those are clearly more sort of noble in pursuits. But with things like sickles, or using, you know, sort of pitchforks, or using logs, or you know, quarter staves, or things like that, I think those are more sort of, you know, commonest types of weapons. So in order to get original information, that's going to be useful because, I mean, these knights may well not know how to use sickles in combat properly and in a dedicated manner. They're not idiots. You know, they, they're people who've been learning how to use various weapon styles. And if they see this kind of looks odd or now, it, does, it doesn't look right. E you know, going from a fighter's perspective, so to speak. So they'd be able to sniff out if there's rubbish in this. And they'll probably just denounce the guy. He's not a swordmaster. It's just, it's just crap they just put into stuff the pages 
thumbs down review. So of course, they need to make sure they're going to learn some proper stuff. And again, pe like I mentioned earlier, peasants are just pretty cheap anyway, so why not? So uh, yeah, I think that the knowledge on how to use things like sickles in combat came from, guess what? The peasants and commoners themselves. I think again, it probably wasn't very, ex you know, it wouldn't necessarily be expensive, and although nobles would probably portray them and put them in fine detail of their artwork and their elaborate descriptions, what you're describing are people who've picked up tools and have decided to kill each other with them, or just learning how to spar and do sort of practice styles and things like that for fun and tournaments with peasant weapons. So clearly, these peasants knew something about combat to be able to teach those styles to the nobles putting that stuff in the manuscripts. That's my opinion anyway.